Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, Shinrin, Yoku, and Yurt Life, bringing you a grand solar minimum. Update Tuesday, November 7th, 9 p.m. Mountain Time, 2023. The eruption watch continues on Iceland, especially the Reykjanes Peninsula here, as seismicity is picking up. Keep calm. It's boom time. Cold front and rain arrives in Texas on Thursday, so stay tuned for the moisture. First major storm of the season may impact West Coast next week, and we have the full forecast as snow is in the weather for the East and the West. And here is when the flakes will fly. Let's take a look at the forecast here. We can see some light precipitation over the west, the high elevations, uh, mainly snow there. And as we enter late tomorrow, there's going to be that precipitation building up in Texas, moving across the state. But at the same time, Thursday, all day, the northeast will be seeing mixed precipitation as well as snow up in the northern areas. That is coming for the east. And then if we move it through to next week, you could see system after system coming into the Pacific Northwest, British Columbia there, and then a major system moving through here next Wednesday, Thursday, going to be affecting the Sierras and most of the southern areas. We're going to be picking up snow as well as New Mexico, Arizona potentially. So good news for the Four Corners region here in the forecast. We'll just walk the snow through day by day. Here's Wednesday, November 8th into Thursday morning, just moderate snow for the West. As that snow is going to be moving towards the East here, it looks like Michigan is going to be picking up the Northern tier there, some significant snow as well as Ontario, Quebec, even the middle sections of Canada there picking up some snow. Looks like Vermont, New Hampshire, Northern New York and Maine. And then system after system moving into the Pacific Northwest, literally tilting the scale on the snow. Take a look at these numbers, 82 inches in BC. And it's also looking like next week's system will bring heavy snow to the Sierras. Could be seeing four feet of snow or more to the higher elevations. And here's the full forecast. Critical fire weather in the southwest. Record high temperatures likely in the most southern regions of the U.S. Critical fire weather including dry gusty winds are forecast Today, over southeast Colorado and portions of New Mexico, Arizona, and the Texas Panhandle. Warm temperatures are expected this week for the Southern Plains, Mid-South, and Ohio Valley regions where record-breaking or near-record highs are likely. So, stay tuned for Indian summer. Not a bummer, as snowstorm kills herders in Mongolia. Bad news there. Heavy record-breaking snow hits China. Anchorage is blanketed by record snow. And a new study shows that Antarctica has cooled more than one sea since 1999. As the fear-mongering continues there, take a look at the sheep of the Kajan herdsmen in Xijiang all froze up to death. That looks chilly. It certainly looks chilly. And... Well, the sheep are frozen. 400 earthquakes recorded under Mount St. Helens since mid-July. That number has actually gone pretty high, and we've been reporting on it. Currently, just 167 earthquakes in the last 30 days. This went as high as 175 as on the Pacific Seismic Network here. And we're keeping a close eye on that activity as seismicity is increasing and experts are now saying this is indicative of the volcano recharging. So recharging going on at Mount St. Helens as 400 earthquakes recorded under the volcano since mid-July. And that brings us to the next seismic swarm, and that is on Iceland. Now, the number of earthquakes have dropped down, but the inflation continues. Uh, a couple large quakes above three magnitude just kicking off. Uh, just hours ago, we've got the live watch here in the region of that uplift. And we still see no magma at the surface. All the links will be below to everything we talk about tonight. So go check them out. Satellite data confirms that uplift continues next to Pjörborn, which is where we just showed you here on the live stream. Around 900 earthquakes in the area in the last 24 hours, hours of powers. 
In fact, there have been 900 earthquakes in the last 24 hours, most of them in the area between Pyrborn and Sifengal. The largest earthquake was M2.9. We've now had above magnitude 3 kicking off in this region. And according to the satellite data process around 5 p.m. yesterday, covering the period between November 4th and 6th, confirming uplift continues in the region. So we're waiting for an imminent eruption to happen any moment. And we've got eyes on the scene. Worldwide Volcano News Update. Not much more to report on. We do have some Continued activity here coming from all the normal players, including Kluchiskoy, with volcanic ash moving 15 knots um, to the southeast. So Kluchiskov still puffing and passing Fuego to 16,000, Sangay to 20,000, but overall normal activity worldwide as we wait for the imminent eruption on Iceland. Space Weather News update. The sun is quiet some sunspots peppering the disk at solar max. The coronal hole has left the coupling with us, and the geomagnetic storm that went on for days has now come to a close. All is quiet on the Western Front as far as space weather. And, well, there were some spectacular pictures of Aurora. Now weren't there. Let's take a look at this. Absolutely stunning. And so the geo three-day geomagnetic forecast is all calm and calmer and calmer as we move through the next three days. The oldest black hole found, and it may solve a cosmic mystery. Well, black holes are mathematical constructs and fairy tales, but I do digress. Here you can see them claiming this glowing object is a black hole. <laughs> Two NASA space telescopes teamed up to scrutinize a distant galaxy and discovered something mind-boggling. A gargantuan black hole inside a galaxy is more than 13 billion years old. Well, if it was that old, wouldn't it have sucked everything in the universe into it by now? I do digress. The links on the fairy tale will be below. Have you heard of the Nubian egg? This is a fantastic find. This egg was uncovered in a tomb which was undisturbed at the time of unearthing and dated to 4400 BC, which makes the egg around 6,500 years old. Some others have pushed the dating of the egg as far as 7,000 years old. But what makes this egg so significant? Well, it's just an ostrich egg with some carvings on it, and it survived 6,500 years without breaking in a burial. And this unto itself is remarkable, but this is not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the image, the image of the three pyramids in Egypt, just west of the Nile in the place it should be. And this apparently is thousands of years before the pyramids were even built. So how is this even possible? The triangles do in fact very much look like pyramids, like those three dominant pyramids located on the, G the Giza Plateau. The Pyramid of Menkurai, the Pyramid of Khafre, and the Great Pyramid of Khufu. With the snake-like etching and the larger representing the Nile, this bizarre artifact, well, very well could be telling us that the Great Pyramids in Giza are much older than they are shoving down our throats. What say you? Leave a comment below. All the links, by the way, will be below as well. Now, the Holy Grail of shipwrecks is to be recovered from the deep, along with $20 billion worth of treasure, which has already been confirmed due to some photography they've done at great depths. This baby lies deeper than 3,000 feet on the sea floor, and a team of is well, a shipwreck team is going down to recover the coins and the treasures. Now, there is supposedly over 100,000 gold coins uh, totaling over $10 billion on this shipwreck. So well worth the effort as the Holy Grail of shipwrecks is going to be recovered from the deep. And that will be fantastic to follow that. So stay tuned for updates. As Leah and I are about to embark on a multi-day journey out to Chaco Canyon, our first visit there, we've been to almost every other locality in the Southwest, 
and this is the last on our tech sheet. We're going to start with Pueblo Pintado in the morning, an absolutely glorious outlier of the Chacoan culture, and we're going to be doing some stunning, cutting-edge scientific podcasts on what we believe to be happening here in the desert southwest a thousand years ago with the Chaco culture, which was once referred to as Anasazi, and we think we've put the pieces together. And we'll be at Pueblo Pintado tomorrow, and then we'll go into the main Chaco culture uh, national landmark the next day. So stay tuned for amazing footage that are be coming out from Chaco Canyon and the Chaco Outliers starting tomorrow afternoon. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please share this video as we are shadow banned and we need your help to grow. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. We love you. Be safe. And that is a boom. Mm.